It's the practical application of ecology and natural resources which create abundance on your homestead. When you know how to work with nature, you're more likely to get the results that you're looking for, which means less effort, more outputs, greater food security, even greater physical security. Let's talk about this. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. So the concepts of ecology and natural resources are going to be there whether or not you know how to manage your farm, whether or not you know how to, where to place your homestead, no matter what you're doing when it comes to getting started with your homestead. In fact, if you want to start a homestead with no money, you can grab a pad of paper and start with your homestead design. Now, there's practical applications of what you're doing in your current location, wherever you live, of how you do housekeeping, how you do your pantry, how you manage the shopping. Those elements you can start practicing right away. But when it comes to designing your homestead, that dream farm, that lifestyle experience, the design plan is the most practical and easiest application of skill. So you're watching a bunch of YouTube videos. You're listening to a bunch of podcasts. Let's draw your property. So you're going to have a house. And in the permaculture design aspect, you're going to have a zone one. That's the zone immediately around your house. Have you ever considered in which direction your house should face? Well, if you're in the northern hemisphere, facing your house south gives you solar aspect that allows you to use the sun's energy to warm your home and to even cool your home in the summer. So you'll be warmer in the winter because as the sun has a lower aspect, you'll allow it to shine into your house more. That influences the windows design. And if this in the summer the sun is higher, it's going to have shade that design that d d dictates some of the roof layout. Now, your typical builder is not going to know these things. And very often by living on the land first, you'll better understand these things because ultimately your elevation matters when it comes to solar aspect and solar angle. So what we want to do first is we want to start looking at the ecology or concepts of ecology concepts of permaculture, the concepts of how the natural resources on land works. So did you know if a house is on the top of a hill, you're more likely to get hot air coming up during the summer and the cool air that could have been around your house is going to go down in a way. And then in the winter, you're going to get more wind. And so that position on the top of a hill, while it's scenic and it's beautiful and it's kind of got this epic view that impresses your friends is actually not very energy efficient and requires more energy inputs in the property itself. Now, ecology tells us that rocky land will respond differently than clay soil. Ecology tells us what kinds of plants typically grow in that area, so you're not trying to grow citrus in the mid-Atlantic area, or uh, apples in a tropical area. These elements working together are not within the typical landowner's experience. Most of the folks that subscribe to our newsletter who are a part of our coaching programs and such, they have an idea for land use before they have an idea for the land, this the symbiotic relationship you're forming with that land. Now, I don't mean to be too abstract, but if you're going to hunt on that land, don't you want the biggest, healthiest bucks? Don't you want turkeys that, that mate and, and multiply every year and, and good vantage points so you can get a clear shot? Don't you want the best bow hunting whether it's bear or other things. And I know you may not be into hunting, but a lot of our subscribers are into hunting. But even if you only hunt with a camera, wouldn't you like to know that that land is, is providing for the wildlife that you so much enjoy? Now, let's say you're going to have small livestock. Wouldn't you like to know that you're putting your fences in the right place so that that livestock is contained and so that the, the cost of the fence doesn't become an additional expense over time? And what does that mean? Well, that means running fences on contour lines, making sure your fences are not at the top of the hill or the bottom of the hill, but maybe through the center of the hill on a uh, on a ridge line or on a uh, a contour. Or maybe you don't divide the fields up. You know, you may use temporary fencing. Every property will be different. But again, the application of these principles is the true demonstration of their value, and you can start on paper first. Now, when you start on paper, you're going to use a map of the area, uh, but you can build your homestead, your zone one on paper before you even own a piece of property. 
you can just simply get out a piece of paper and look through some housing ideas and, and then start thinking about the solar aspect. And so you want your house to face south, um, not necessarily because in some elevations you might want your house to face slightly west or slightly east. You may want to have a beautiful front porch, but if it's facing south and you've got sun on it all day, uh, you may want to have a, 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 a more shallow, deeper porch than you might have in a traditional home. See, there's all these different aspects, and when we fall in love with the design without considering the ecology, without considering how nature works, we very often get what we want, but we're disappointed with it, or we have additional work and labor. Now, I'm not saying there will be zero labor if you mind the hydrology, for example, but you're less likely to have a basement that leaks if you got your house placed and the water management, and you're less likely to have erosion, and you're more likely to have uh, clear running streams and springs when you understand hydrology. When it comes to ecology, the, we talked about so types of soil. If you want a house with a basement, maybe you want a nice root cellar, you need to be in soil that, that allows for that, or you're going to have additional costs when it comes to preparing that job site. So again, there is a, a bridge between the topic of ecology to the typical home landowner's experience that we have to, to build. And for a lot of folks, and then this is why we have the coaching programs, this is why we recommend the mastermind calls, and we, we have you get on calls with experts, is because typically many of the people who are moving out of the city, who are moving from the suburbs into a rural area, they haven't been to the rural area since they were kids. They haven't lived and owned land at all in many cases. And I've even seen some folks make the mistakes of buying 70 or 100 acres and not having the capabilities and skills to manage that land properly. Now, if you've got 100 acres of hunting land and you're, you're good at hunting, you want to be studying habitat management. If you've got 100 acres of farmland and you are, uh, you know, you're new to farming, you want to be studying the history of that land and then some methodology for managing that, the animals on that land. If you are just simply buying land to conserve it, then it's critical to start doing animal surveys so you can start understanding what habitat already exists. We have to resist our individual desire to transform the land into what we want and instead work symbiotically with helping the land express what it wants. You will not overcome the fact that cold air moves downhill. And so if you build your house in a valley, as beautiful as it may be, you're going to face even colder weather than you would up on the hills. Uh, there's so many aspects of this, and this is why we recommend taking a basic survival class. And this is why we recommend investing in the knowledge of either a master naturalist program in, in the region in which you want to build your homestead or investing in a permaculture design program if you want just broad knowledge. But what we have to do to get the very best from the land is we have to have a plan, and that plan considers solar aspect, forest composition, water usage, climate in zone. So you could be in zone seven, but have a climate that's more like zone nine or, or more like zone three. And we need to have these things put together on paper because, again, you have the least amount of risk. You can be in an apartment in New York City with trains and buses all around you disturbing your sleep and still get out a piece of paper and draw a diagram about your dream property. Now, from there, we can start big, figuring out costs and the location. And, you know, once we found location, we can get solar aspect. We can start looking at what existing infrastructure is there. And we can actually make this happen. In the future, I hope to show a video about goats and their ability to reduce fire risk. If you're in an area that has fire risk, there's many things you can do in how you manage the land that reduces fire risk. But also in that zone one, there's many designs that reduces fire risk for the home itself and how your home is designed. There's ways of putting trees in to, to reduce the amount of incoming winds. Maybe you get a piece of property and there's only one place to put a house and it's not the most ideal place. What would you do in order to make it a more ideal place? Now, remember, when we're working with nature and we're working with the ecology of an environment, we're able to reduce energy costs. We're able to improve the durability of our structures. We're able to have a more enjoyable life. Like, for example, having a garden that actually grows on its own rather than have to force it to grow with all kinds of inputs.
We lower our costs because you won't need to get greenhouses and all this extra equipment, maybe even wouldn't need to get a tractor. Because again, we can inform our management as we work with nature. Now, the ideal way, again, to get in touch with nature is to go out there and, and just go primitive, is to go to a survival school, take a little weekend class, go out there and camp, go out there and hike, just be involved in nature and understand that what you're seeing, uh, especially when you're when you're on a trail, what you're seeing is not necessarily nature itself. It could be somewhat curated, but it's better than nothing because when you get out on the land, you can avoid a lot of the common mistakes. Now, I've redesigned houses. So we, we do design plans for clients and I've redesigned houses or at least the footprint of where a house will be several times based on uh, the the outcomes that the client wants to have. But I've always got to ask, what is the ecology of the land? Ecology is the systems of nature that are working in a certain space. And so do you have a aquatic, you know, if you're on the, on the, the shore, is it an aquatic ecology? Is it a marshland? Is it a, a savanna? Is it a forest? Is it something else? Now, some of what we talk about, we will actually transition an ecology. So for example, at the urban homestead site that uh, we're, we're, we're consolidating out of, uh, we turned it from a forest system that was very aged out, the trees were falling over, into a Virginia savanna grasslands. And we did that for some very important reasons. At one of the sites that I'm managing, we're actually going to change a scrub forest into a Virginia savanna uh, grasslands. Now, why did we choose Virginia savanna grasslands? Well, that's because the ecology of the area to support quail, to support uh, uh, small birds, deer, fox, bear, uh, turkey, all those things. The savanna grassland is most optimal for the region and the climate that we're in. However, just right down the road, there's land that's being transitioned from hay fields into forests. And there's other lands that are transitioning from forest to hay fields. And even on a single piece of property, you might have microclimates and, and adaptation uh, uh, climates in areas that you're adjusting according to your need, but always working with nature. So the ecology of nature is very important to understand, especially if you're going to work with nature in order to move towards your homestead dream. One of the interesting things about this, we get a lot of questions about food forests. We get a lot of questions about regenerative agriculture, uh, small livestock. When you understand the ecology of an area, for example, if there's a bunch of deer, then you can have goats. If there's a bunch of wild pigs, you don't necessarily want domesticated pigs. If there's um, elk and large animals, you don't necessarily want smaller animals in your area. There are these concepts and matches that we can answer for. But again, if you're starting on paper, it doesn't matter what you write down. You don't have animals to feed. You don't have buildings to, to, to build. If it's on paper, that design plan uh, tends to become the shortcut to something that is going to be symbiotic with the piece of land that you choose. It's going to seem like magically coming together. And, and, and I really mean that. A lot of times people will come back and they'll say, look, we planted this thing. And it's almost like once we planted it, we don't have to do anything. And it's really just a matter of just harvesting and harvesting because it grows like crazy. These plants do so well here. And then they say, well, we're going to expand it to the other side of the property. And I say, well, it's a different climate on the other side of the property. It's a different ecology. And they said, no, 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 we, this is doing so good on this piece of land. We're going to do it on the other side of the property. And then it's a constant struggle again. Trees and plants, even wildlife, moves to the greatest abundance, and it moves to where they're going to have the best and most ideal environment for their growth. And so when, when you understand the ecology, and you have these design plans, and you have these tests, and maybe it's a little more scientific approach, a little more systematic approach, things will just work very well. Not any benefit to you other than you observe nature, worked with nature, and did the implementation in a systematic approach. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. I hope you'll take out a sheet of paper and just start 
just start outlining and brainstorming about your homestead. It is closer than you can imagine to have land of your own, to have a homestead lifestyle of your own that's kind of a slower pace, more enjoyable, and then we can help you avoid a lot of the common mistakes that people make. And again, I'm helping you, and I would really love to help you have more of a symbiotic relationship with nature where you're a good steward of the land because I know that land will reward you hundreds of thousands of times over for doing what is right for that land and then ultimately provide you food security, physical security, provide you an opportunity to have a lifestyle that many only dream of, and then ultimately provide for generations of memories, generations of family, uh, generations of, of just abundance. Thanks for listening. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. Please ask your questions at www.prosperityhomestead.org. And I'll see you in the next podcast.